it's important and imperative that you know your time and your season and that you don't get caught up in the publicity of it all. But know your time and know your season. One key point of life is learning how to tell time, knowing the time, and keeping the time. This is something we learn as children. We learn how to tell time, but I am not so sure we are always taught the importance of knowing the time and keeping time. Yes, we learn times and seasons, but are we taught spiritual times and seasons and the importance of keeping up with the spiritual times and seasons of our lives? God gave times and seasons and appointed times and the Sabbath for remembering and keeping. And these are all spiritual timekeepers as well. But there is also in every believer's life their own special appointed times and seasons. And sometimes these seasons can look much like the sowing and the reaping of harvest. Sometimes we have times of great planting, times of rain, times of growth and maturation. Sometimes the seasons are seasons of death, loss, and pruning. But all of these things work with patience and perseverance in us. It is key in life to be a discerner of times. But in life, people get all pulled away out of the purpose and out of the plan that God has created for them very easily. Many people get wrangled up in the self-will, popularity, self-seeking, attention-hungry, publicity-craving world, and this gets them off track, off course, and off of their appointed times. I really like studying Jesus Yeshua's heart and the position that he took at his ministry his purpose and his perspective of time and his time while here on earth. And what I continually see is that he was always focused on being on the father's time. He was always focused on doing what the father required him to do, not what he required for himself. Jesus was never self-seeking. He was never seeking attention, seeking popularity, seeking approval or seeking for publicity. Much of what he did was in secret and to a small group of people, to a small remnant. Much of what Jesus did while here on earth, he would also tell people, don't say anything because he was concerned about doing all that was required of him to do in the short amount of time that he was required to do it. And therefore, he protected his time. He did not let people force him to do things that would cause him to be killed earlier than what was predestined for him to be killed. So let's look at a key scripture here for our lesson today. And it is found in John 7, 1 through 13. And it says, after this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brother said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Therefore, Jesus told them, my time is not yet here. For you, any time will do. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go to the festival. I'm not going to go up to the festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, where is he? Among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, he is a good man. Others replied, no, he deceived the people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. So as you can see in the scripture, Jesus' brothers were said that they were ones that did not believe in him, yet they were forcefully trying to get him to go up to this Jewish feast. 
They wanted him to show off all the splendorous things that he was doing, and they wanted him to get credit for it. But Jesus was not concerned with the publicity of the miracles. He was concerned about doing the things in its proper time, in its proper season, according to the Father's timing. Jesus did not have time for publicity. Jesus did not have time for showboating. Jesus wasn't wasting time. He was trying to do what the father told him to do. And he knew very well that it was for him to do at the specific time. Jesus was protecting the time that God gave him by telling them, my time has not yet come. Meaning he wasn't willing to give himself over to the mob that wanted to kill him. He needed more time to do what God was asking him to do. He wasn't trying to be in the crowds of the people while they were secretly hunting him and trying to bring him up on charges and trying to have him killed. Jesus protected his time and the time that God gave him. So let's keep reading in verse 14 through 18. It says, not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? Jesus answered, my teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who comes to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. So Christ did not seek his own agenda or his own teaching. He was about his father's business. He was not about personal glory. Jesus even told his mother that his time had not yet come. And you can find this in John 2, 3 through 4. And it says, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. And he said, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. And he wasn't trying to be indignant. He wasn't trying to be rude. He knew the miracles would draw attention and cause the stopwatch to begin for those who wanted to seek to kill him. So he was trying to protect the time he had to do the work that he had to do. Jesus was a keeper of his time. He was a protector of his time and his purpose. And so my question to you, are you a protector of your time? And are you a protector of your purpose, the purpose that God has given you? Are you letting things and people pull you in a direction that goes against the time and the purpose that God has given you? Or are you letting God direct you and pull you into his purpose that he created for you? Publicity, popularity, notoriety should also not be worth our time. We, like Christ, should always be aware when things get in the way of our time and get our time out of sync, and we should stay clear of those things. We should shut down requests that people try to get us out of sync and out of time and out of the season that God has for us. We should stick with the path and the purpose and the plan of God that God has prepared for us that will allow us to do the right thing at the right time in the right place in the right season. And the only way we can do that is we stay linked up with God's timing. So I just wanted to encourage you today to be in the timing and the seizing and the will and the purpose of God. Don't let things and people and requests get you off of the timing and the purpose of God. Ask yourself this question. Is this God's purpose? Is this God's timing? Is this God's will? Or is this my purpose, my timing, my will? Or is this somebody else's purpose, somebody else's time, somebody else's will? Ask yourself those questions. And if you can answer them truthfully and find out that it is something else driving you, something else pulling you, something else directing you, cut those things off and make sure that you are keeping time with the time that God is giving you, with the purpose that God has placed on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit will direct you to know when you are linked up and synced up in the purpose and the timing of God. So I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that you would have wisdom to know your timing and your season and that you will protect it with everything that is within you. May God bless you and may you and yours be blessed.